the stadium, Sun Devil Stadium there in Glendale, Arizona. The coaches ahead of the players right now and the coaches and players are coming in. Let's see who we can see. There is Justin Fields, one of our Heisman, two Ohio State Heisman finalists there. Let's see who else we can recognize. That is Ohio State Athletic Director Gene Smith there. All right, again, you're taking a live look at the Ohio State Buckeyes as they enter Sun Devil Stadium there in Glendale, Arizona, ahead of the Fiesta Bowl. We are about a minute, or excuse me, an hour 50 until kickoff. Buckeyes looking really nice in their gray jackets as they um, enter the stadium there. All right, I think the last of the Buckeyes came into the stadium. Um, again, Gene Smith bringing up the rear there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Christine Barcone. Welcome to our Fiesta Bowl pre-game uh, webcast here. We've got lots going on. We want to hear from you guys. Let us know down in the comments where you are watching. Uh, we've got our feed up here on NBC4 as well as our Fox 8 viewers. So hello to Central Ohio as well as Northeastern Ohio. Thank you guys so much for watching from our sister station there in Cleveland, Fox 8. All right, let's jump right into it, guys. Uh, Jared Smalley, he had a really great conversation with Coach Ryan Day. I believe it was yesterday, and they talked really about how this game is such a big deal. You know, these two really huge programs, you've got Clemson and Ohio State, both teams, they, they don't, I don't know, they, they're kind of playing the, uh, they're being disrespectful card right now. I don't know. A lot of people a little skeptical about that, but let's see what a Coach Day had to say about the Fiesta Bowl. I believe this was yesterday, one-on-one -on -one with sports director Jared Smalley. You have talked all season about how confidence breeds preparation and, and preparation breeds confidence. Sure. How confident is your team going into tomorrow? Well, I think we have a lot of confidence, you know, certainly uh, the way we've played this year, the way we prepared coming into this game. And then I think the other part of it is coming off of the championship game, going down two scores and being able to respond is, is really important because we know no matter what happens in this game, you know, we have something to draw back upon. And, it's going to come down to, to how well the players play. You know, I think we've had a good, uh, you know, week of preparation out here in Arizona. You're looking at both sides of the ball now. When you look at your offense, obviously what Justin has done this season, you run the football at an extremely high level, but you're going against the number one ranked defense in America. When you look at them on video, what do you see that they present such a challenge? Well, they do a great job, and, and Brent does a great job of coming from all different angles, changing up the looks. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can't make them bigger than they are. You know, we've gone against really good defenses in the past, and it's going to come down to fundamentals. It's going to come down to winning the line of scrimmage and then guys taking care of the football and, and uh, doing a good job in situational uh, situations in terms of, like, third down, short yardage, red zone, goal line. And you've talked this week about the excitement of that matchup on the other side. You're talking about one of the great defensive lines Ohio State's ever put out there against one of the best offensive lines Clemson's ever put out there. Yeah, no, I mean, it, the, the line of scrimmage in games like this is huge. I mean, uh, the battle of field position is huge. The turnover battle is huge. All the things that uh, are really important that sometimes when you get in lopsided games don't show up. And mm -hmm. Clemson and, and you know, and we, we've also, we've, both teams have been in those situations this year. Well, 
when you play in tight games like this, all the little things matter. Uh, every yard matters. Every uh, you know series matters, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And so everything's exponentially bigger. And uh, we got to make sure that uh, you know we understand that the fundamentals of the game and the plan to win is critically important. One last thing you mentioned this week: you're not ready for this to be done. Right. You're not ready for this team to be done. Can you just express what this team? means to you how much you value them the opportunities they've given you yeah it's, it's hard for me to say um, you know in just one sentence or two uh, what these guys have done for my family and, and for this coaching staff has been unbelievable the leadership and uh, and you know being a first-time head coach in a place like Ohio State <laughs> with all the expectations and for the way these guys have played and the chemistry that's been built this year is, is really special and uh, you know I said it to the team this week I don't, I don't you know we're not ready for this thing to end you know we want to keep playing and keep going All right, guys, that was Jared Smalley's one on one with Coach Ryan Day. He said again, it is about the little things. Hey, I want to say hello to all of our Dayton viewers that are watching from WDTN's live stream right now. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having a nice time. Uh, this holiday week here. Let me say hello to all of you guys and I want to get your score predictions from everybody who's watching in Dayton right now as well. So we've got the Dayton area, Miami Valley watching. We've got Central Ohio. We've got Northeast Ohio with Fox 8. It's a it's an Ohio party up in here. Um, can we get some Eastern Ohio? Let's see if uh, my former station from the Ohio Valley WTRF, maybe they can hop on here as well so we can say hello to my old stomping grounds right now. All right, let's check out what everybody is saying in Dayton. Hey, Jason. Hey, Katha. Hey, Karen and Randy. And Karen again. Michelle, Belinda, Doris. Uh, Hayden, he thinks the score is going to be 55-45. 55-45 who? Buckeyes, I hope. Kim, hello. How are you? She sees Beat Clemson. Hello to Jeremy. Good evening, everybody. Thank you again so much for watching. These are all the fans watching on um, WDTN's live stream right now. Uh, so we want to say hello to everybody. Debbie just said OHIO. Oh, Debbie, I hope you're doing well. All right, so again, like I said, we've been with the fia, um, with the fans out in um, Gl uh, Glendale and the Phoenix area really just um, all week. And again, the support, it's, it's, it's Ohio State West is what so many people call it. And um, I... Justin Holbrock, one of our, our digital sports reporter, he was talking to some fans at the Buckeye Bash a little bit earlier, and here's what uh, they had to say about the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes playing again in Phoenix. Kind of feels like Ohio West, I guess. <laughs> oh, no! Their team, team is so good. good. The band is amazing. <laughs> If I'm wearing an Ohio State shirt, somebody somebody yells out, OH! Ohio! Graduated from OSU in 76. Gets in your DNA. We we bleed scarlet and gray. Number one, yeah, the Buckeyes! Well, it's definitely a party atmosphere. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> As a little kid, I liked uh, Michigan, and those people ruined it for me. So now, now here we are. 50 years later, I'm an Ohio State fan. We don't give a damn for the whole Like being back in Ohio when all these people come, it's great. It's awesome. Go Bucks! Woo, go Bucks! Best part of being a Buckeye fan? Oh, camaraderie. The camaraderie. The camaraderie with the other fans. All right, guys, back here in our digital streaming uh, center right now. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. We've got people from across the state of Ohio, all of Buckeye Nation watching right now. So hello to everybody in Dayton, as well as Central Ohio, Northeast Ohio, Cleveland area, Canton area. Good evening to all of you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. We are getting closer and closer to kickoff. Kickoff is at 8 p.m., and we are so very excited um, as the Buckeyes are playing in the Fiesta Bowl here shortly. Let's take a look at that LSU score. It is halftime now in Atlanta. It is 49-14. And, uh, wow, uh, LSU Tigers um, with Joe Burrow 
as their leader. They are really running away with it there in the Cotton Bowl. Um, really kind of a one-sided game there. 49 to 14 Tigers happening right now. So we showed you Jared's one-on-one -on -one with Ryan Day, and that was excellent. Ryan Day, um, you know, a really good interview. I love every time Jared gets a, an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with him. I really always enjoy his press conferences as well. But I don't know if many of you um, know about this, but um, – his wife, Nina Day, actually sat down with our Matt Barnes a few days ago as well. And uh, here's what the first lady of Ohio State football had to say about their first season um, as head coach and as uh, the first lady. We've never really experienced anything like um, Ohio State football yeah. <laughs> until we got here. Yeah, it's on a level of its own. <laughs> But Buckeye Nation embraced the Day family from the beginning with open arms, which made the transition easier. We have an 11, 9, and 6-year-old, so with their schedules and just making sure the focus stays on them a lot of the times because, you know, this job can kind of overpower um, everything. It's a job Ryan Day has prepared for his whole life, and Nina would know. We grew up about a mile apart in Manchester, New Hampshire, um, and we went to the same elementary school and junior high and high school and eventually the same college. We were on the same t-ball team when we were six years old in 1985. When Ryan's football career ended, Nina knew coaching would be his next step. And the minute I want to complain about anything, um, I always go back to, well, I knew this when we were little that this was going to happen, so I can't really complain about it. And she doesn't. In fact, her and Ryan are now using this platform for good, helping to bring attention to mental health among children and young adults. We were hoping that more people would start to talk about it, that we would generate more awareness towards mental health and the importance of it um, so that parents with kids of all ages can start talking about it. Ryan and Nina donated $100,000 to Nationwide Children's On Our Sleeves movement, another sign of how they plan to be in Columbus for years to come. Every day he wakes up and it just feels very, very grateful to be a part of you know, the Ohio State University, and we all do. I mean, my kids have lived all over the country, and this is the kind of the first place all three of them are very, very happy. Um, and they talk about the high schools that they're going to, so Daddy doesn't really have a choice. <laughs>
you know, we, a couple of us here at the NBC4 Studios might feel that way as well, that they have already booked hotels and trips, and they are ready to go to New Orleans. They are confident. Um, I know Eric Halperin, um, one of our reporters here with NBC4 in Columbus, he spoke to a travel agent about the amount of people who are uh, already booking their travel plans, and he has um, what they're seeing as far as travel uh, to New Orleans is going to look like for Ohioans if we do make it, if we beat the Clemson Tigers. Here's Eric. A lot of travel agencies allow people to reserve a spot ahead of time, and they're not charged until it is guaranteed OSU is heading to New Orleans. If you are jumping the gun and doing the booking on your own, make sure you're aware of all the cancellation fees and policies and what is or is not refundable. Ike Reynolds was the only one working at the Reynolds Travel Office Friday afternoon. Others are out in Arizona coordinating the travel agency's Fiesta Bowl trip. My intent was to stay behind because I felt the bookings were going to continue. Even though the Buckeyes haven't even played Clemson yet, those bookings he's talking about are for the national championship game in New Orleans. I've been booking people today. He says about 250 people have already reserved a spot. They're offering a variety of packages. The three-night trip includes airfare, hotel, and a ticket to the game, and range in price from about $3,000 to $4,400 a person. A representative with travel partners in Dublin tells me many have already made reservations through them, too. Say if I'm just booking on my own is doing it uh, maybe tonight or tomorrow night during halftime a, a smart option maybe I, I think it very smart the best I can say is the earlier the better Reynolds says a lot of the people he's dealt with held off on going to the Fiesta Bowl holding out for the big one hoping the Buckeyes make it to the Big Easy though he knows getting through Clemson may not be so easy I know there's a lot of people going to do their own thing and get their own tickets, and that's there. I know the Buckeye Nation is going to be well represented in New Orleans. We just got to beat Clemson to get there. And if that does happen, which all of Buckeye Nation is hoping for, he expects a lot more bookings on Sunday. Another tip he has, if you're going about doing this on your own, try looking at flights outside of the January 11th to January 14th window. Local for you outside the shoe, I'm Eric Halperin, NBC4. All right, Eric, thank you so, so much. Um, again, lots of Buckeyes are really confident about the Fiesta Bowl and uh, have already booked their travel plans. And uh, let me know if you are one of them. Um, I might have some friends that have done that already. No plane tickets. They uh, plan on driving. How far of a drive is it? Let's check this out. Columbus to New Orleans. All right. It is about a 13 hour drive from Columbus to New Orleans. Um, Columbus isn't the only place we are streaming live from right now. We want to say good evening to our Fox 8 viewers out of Northeastern Ohio. Hello, how are you guys? Thank you for watching from the Cleveland area as well as our viewers in Dayton, WDTN, and of course Central Ohio where we are located just down the street from the Ohio State University here at the NBC4 station. Uh, a good time to be a Buckeye guys uh, the suspense is building we are getting closer and closer to the game we are about an hour and 35 minutes um, away from the, out from the game right now the first game the semifinal it's halftime right now for the LSU Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners LSU again really just running away with this one 49 to 14 over the Oklahoma Sooners right now that 1-4 game being played in Atlanta in the Cotton Bowl right now Immediately after that game ends, it is going to be the Ohio State Buckeyes versus those Clemson Tigers. Really exciting. Um, I believe, let's check in. I think Jared, Mr. Jared Smalley, I think he's ready to talk to us. He is inside Sun Devil Stadium right now. Let's give him a few seconds here. <laughs> hey, Jared, what's going on? Hi. Hi, Christine. How you doing? Uh, we're uh, just getting set up for you here because uh, Justin Holbrock just walked up, so we're going to get him on board. The Buckeye team will be coming out here for warm-ups in a few minutes, so we'll show you what that looks like, and we'll just kind of narrate it for you play-by-play -play, uh, about an hour and 40 minutes until they kick this thing off for real. I know this. I guarantee it's going to be better than the first game. First game has been garbage, unless you like Joe Burrow, and then it's been the greatest game. <laughs> 
Joe Burrow has put together one of the more remarkable uh, college football performances I could ever think of. Seven touchdown passes in the first half to a 49-14 lead for LSU over Oklahoma. We thought Oklahoma defensively was better. Nope. Nope. Not that bad. I mean, it was. that's a very, very rough uh, way to end your season. That's how Oklahoma is uh, going to bow out. So it's going to be LSU playing a virtual home game in New Orleans January 13th in the national championship game against the winner of this game tonight. Here, come on in, Justin Holbrook. Hey, what's going on? So you saw the team arrival? What did yes, you think? Yeah, they both look focused. Okay. I guess that's a good thing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Very stoic. Trevor, uh, Trevor obviously, uh, you know, Justin Fields. It's going to be a quarterback matchup between those two. But, I mean, this, this defense is offense is top five in the country. So yeah. I expect nothing different. I love the, the, the fact that Fields and if you don't know the backstory of, of Justin Fields and, and Trevor Lawrence, it's right. fascinating. They grew up about 25 minutes apart in Georgia. Yes. Fields is from Kennesaw, Georgia, which is a little closer to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence grew up in Cartersville, Cartersville yeah. a little north of that. Right, right. Uh, Highway 41 mm -hmm. combines the two cities. Yes, yeah. It's 25 minutes. They've never played. They, <laughs> their once. high schools never played. Yeah. They played in a um, the opening, yep. the big high school recruiting camp. Yeah. They played a seven on seven game there. Uh, for what it's worth, Justin Fields' team won. <laughs> so I don't know if that means anything. But you used to work in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. you obviously, from the last couple of years, you not only saw them, but you heard the lore, right. the right. history yes. about those two players. Yeah. Take me through their history and what we should expect to see unfold tonight. Well, I think the interesting note there is that you have two quarterbacks from Georgia and neither play in the state of Georgia. Right, you have one quarterback that went to Georgia and then had to come to Ohio State to get success. And the same thing with Trevor is that he had to go over to Clemson, you know, South yeah. Carolina. So it's interesting that you know two guys in a football state left that state to go play there. So that is you know, interesting. The, the difference, obviously, is that Trevor has been here and has won it in his first year. Justin Fields' first full year. So we'll see if he can do the same. But it's experience versus no experience in a game like this. So how does Justin Fields respond? We know what Trevor can do. Yeah, it's interesting. So Kirby Smart, obviously the head coach of Georgia. Yeah. I mean, he got Fields. Yeah. Initially, yeah, he did, like yeah. he got him there. Yeah, just didn't, didn't keep him. him. Yeah. But he, he got him right. there. So you got to give him some credit for right, that. Right. Just your thought on what you think offensively as you look beyond Justin Fields. This is the number one scoring offense in America, Justin. Right. They they deploy as well as anybody can, right. including what we've seen from out of LSU. Yeah. You, as many points as they've put up, as good as they've looked, they haven't been able to match a total offense right. running and pass balance like Ohio State can do. Clemson's the number one total defense. Yeah, and they're not, not a superstar defense either. Isaiah yeah. Simmons is a star, but sure. other than that, sure. I just what's, what's your thought about how that might go tonight? I think it, it depends a lot on how J.K. and the offensive line do. Right, it's always for Ohio State established a run, and that opens up the passing game for Ohio State. And mm -hmm. it didn't happen in the first half against Wisconsin, and we saw what kind of impact that had. When you can't run the ball, you can't really do much against the top defense, and Wisconsin right. is, and so is Clemson. So run the ball, you have success, right? They did the same thing in the second half against the yeah. Badgers. That worked. J.K. got going. Justin Fields started throwing touchdowns. Yeah. It's just that simple, yeah, right? just that simple. Some it's the, easier said than done. Yeah, it's far yeah, easier. Yeah. Some of the Buckeye specialists just came out here. We'll give you a quick look uh, running all the way across the field there. There's uh, Kevin Wilson, the Buckeye uh, offensive co-coordinator. And uh, Clemson will be out shortly. The Tigers, I think, arriving. Clemson arrived after Iowa State? Or? They did, about a half hour. Half yeah. hour, was, yeah. yeah. It was a, so a pretty good gap there. there. Yeah, good gap yeah. between, yeah. So uh, anyway, the teams are out here just starting to get loose. We'll expect the, the full Buckeye lineup to be out here in just a couple of minutes. Again, the crowd, we have no idea how this is going to go tonight. We're going to give you a quick look around and show you the stadium. Um, it's about a 70,000 capacity stadium yeah. like your usual NFL stadium is. And uh, when talking to some Fiesta Bowl folks, they were saying they think there'll be slightly more Ohio State fans. Okay. They think. <laughs> But uh, that resale ticket market, who knows? I was right? telling you, it's just an eye test. You see who's wearing yeah. orange and who's wearing red, and then yep. you figure it out from there. I have a question for you now. So, obviously, Clemson, great defense. How does Ohio State's offense handle someone like Trevor? And Etienne is a great running back. They've got yeah. Justin Ross, a top wide receiver. How do you stop that? Well, I think so. Let's start in the offense, right? right. Ohio State offensively. How do they sure. move the ball? Sure. So, my curiosity is this when you think about um, how do you run the ball, yeah. it's very simple. It's road great the guy in front of you yeah, it's that simple right. the three guys in the middle of the Ohio State offensive line are as good as anybody in America has right. and you talk about that group together opening holes for J.K. Dobbins yeah. if they can establish that early in mm. this game that gives you a far different perspective of what the whole offense could look like because you know they have weapons outside sure if they can establish a steady healthy diet five six yards 
especially on first down. If they can get five, six yards on first down yeah, running the yeah. football, they're in good shape oh, yeah. because they can play action off that. They can really enjoy themselves uh, no matter who the defense is. Mm. If that doesn't go so well, I think they're in real trouble okay. because I don't think them throwing the ball uh, 40, 40, 45 times a game is good. Right. I think it's where they want to live. I think they want to be able to establish a steady diet up front. Mm. You mentioned defensively. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, I think, is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Clemson has one of the best offensive lines in America, yes. just like Ohio State does. Yes. And that matchup between Jackson Carmen at left tackle, yeah. who is from Fairfield, Ohio. Yeah, and then chose Clemson. And right? he chose Clemson. Against in the, Chase Young. Against Chase Young, yes. in all likelihood. Yeah. I'm curious how much they move Chase around. Could be, different schemes. Yeah. 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 You know, the opportunity to put him against different people, sure. make him a stand-up linebacker at times, confuse them offensively. Right. It worked so well at times earlier in the season, especially in that the first Wisconsin game, you recall. Yeah. Yeah. They had no idea where he was coming from, no. and they couldn't no. slide protections to yeah. account for him. That'd be what I would be curious okay. about are those two things, okay. how that battle goes with yeah. Clemson's offensive line, and then conversely, yeah. how well Clemson can handle Ohio State up front. Yeah. And to your point on first down, these are – two and one in most efficient teams in first down. That's right. And it's not a coincidence that they also have two and one in most efficient offense and defense. Right. So those two things very much correlate based on how they do in that first play right. is how the rest of the, the rest of the series, touchdowns, everything goes. You know, you know, it's funny. I was going through stats trying to, uh, uh, you know, figure out some other interesting, maybe some points of difference right. between the two teams. There's not, so, many. Not, <laughs> There's many. not many. Precisely yes. correct. You know, when you think about um, – these are two teams who are very competent yeah. running and throwing the ball. Right. That's not necessarily super common in sure. college football to have that kind of balance, right? right? These two teams are a shining example of what you want to try to achieve from a balanced standpoint. Even down to turnover margin. Absolutely. They're top five in the country in turnover margin. Yeah. They just do not make mistakes. Yeah. Ohio State maybe a few times, right, the Penn, the Penn State game especially. Mm -hmm. But ever since then, not really Justin Fields, right? More than 40 touchdowns, one interception. Right. Still. The thing I've really enjoyed listening to fans this week, not only out here, uh, but back home and what we've our coverage at NBC4 there's a lack of confidence a because bit. I think people a have um, you know that memory of what it felt like three years ago this right. exact game this exact scenario yeah. and it didn't feel all that close and it was the score too yeah, yeah. I mean when you don't score no like when you don't score <laughs> that is that is a really hard thing to try to overcome and oh, I yeah. I'm very curious how mentally uh, those fans will adjust. I'll, I'll tell you this. One, one thing that's very, very interesting, digging up information on Clemson. Mm -hmm. Clemson has won 50 straight games when they've scored first. Hmm. 50. 5 wow. Back to 2015. Jeez. They've won 50 straight games when they've scored first. Wow. And that's my curiosity, is if they score first, Ohio State knows that. Mm. If they score first, is it game over? Yeah. Or Ohio State has proven in the past two games the uh, Big Ten Championship, and at Michigan, you recall, they got right. down both those games yes. yeah. and came flying back. Right. My curiosity is which one of those teams shows, <laughs> shows up, up because I, yes. I think they're going to be tested severely. They have not early. been a friend of the first quarter, but no. their second quarter stats are all, I mean, they're ridiculous for Ohio State, especially yeah. scoring 21 points on average in the second quarter. Right? Yeah. It's just you need to wake up a little bit sooner, right? Yeah, well, you can't fall behind no, on these guys. No, no, for sure. One of the other things I've noticed is interesting. I was talking to some folks about Clemson and what they typically do at the start of a game. Mm -hmm. They typically like to defer. Interesting. So they I don't take the ball. That. Yeah. And Despite I, that stat. Yeah. Huh. It's very, I was like, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, I think the theory behind it is they like they want to demoralize somebody. They want right. to get a three and out. They want to get them off the field, get the ball, get good field position, and go score. Right. So you have a stop and you have Exactly a right. Yeah. And yeah. then you get the ball to start. Yeah. Exactly. You right. get the ball to start second half. Back to your point on 2016, too, you know, more so than the fans is the guys that were a part of that team. You had some guys that were freshmen back in that year, 2016. Yes. And they remember that very well. We talked to them about the Penn State game. Yeah. And they were still very angry about losing to Penn State. Very. Especially this game, 31 points yeah. on a national stage, it's in the back of their head. It has to be. They'll say, no, it's another game. That was a different year, but yeah. they remember it very well. Well, the folks who were here, obviously, right. they probably didn't play very much. No, probably not. So, you know, they were just a, an interested spectator like yeah. anybody else. to be part of it, yeah. But, yeah, it's a very, very interesting deal. Um, hey, Christine Barconi, if you're listening in, uh, would you like of to talk I'm a listening. little bit about what we're seeing out here? Yeah, Jared, I want to talk to you exactly <laughs> about what I'm seeing because – I know I'm not the only one who is going to bring this up. Is that the Ohio State end zone you guys are standing in front of? Yeah, that's right. That's that right. It doesn't look scarlet to me. It looks maroon. Oh, 
Oh, hang on. Hey, Mike, can we show the end zone as the Buckeyes take the field here to start their warm-ups? Oh, hello, Buckeyes. Let's, Christine look, wants no, to look, know if the end zone See their tops. Their tops are scarlet, and that, their, that end zone is not. Okay. We have a color controversy. The first controversy of the night. You know yeah. that I'm Christine, not the Christine's only one who mentioned this. Not... I don't like it. Okay, well, I, I don't know. I mean, we didn't think of it. It's very maroon. <laughs> that's right. It's not the stuff that I think of, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, we'll show you what the Buckeyes are looking like here. This is the tight end group in the front line here. The big guys in the middle, Jeremy Ruckert right there, had that incredible one-handed catch in the uh, Big Ten Championship game. He's out there. Uh, we've got a uh, pretty athletic group of people. That's uh, very simply stated. Luke Farrell, by the way, standing next to uh, Jeremy Ruckert. It's amazing how much tight end depth Ohio State has built this year. Rashad Berry as well, Jake Hausman. They've got four legitimate tight ends who cycle in and out of the lineup, and uh, they don't necessarily catch a lot of footballs, but uh, it is... But they're also uh, good blockers as well. They are, yeah. Very it's good a, at blocking. It's a, it's a group with diverse skill sets, sure. good hands and yeah. all that business. So, anyway, there'll be more Buckeyes coming out here to get loose shortly. Jared, I did have another well, question other, for uh, you that wasn't a color streaks? controversy. Yeah. Um, I want to know okay, what, go ahead. What, what was your favorite part about the um, your your one-on-one -on -one with Ryan Day? That was a really great interview. I thoroughly enjoyed it. What was your favorite part? What was the most interesting thing that stood out to you that he said? Well, it wasn't necessarily what he said. I thought the most interesting thing talking to Ryan yesterday was his demeanor. Uh, Ryan, he's never coached in a game like this. He right. is 16 and 0 as a head coach, but he's never coached in a playoff. He's never coached in a bowl game at, as the head coach, I should say. Right. He has never been the final decision maker, and yet he exuded confidence yesterday. Quiet confidence, not arrogance. Big difference, Christine. I think he is uh, very confident about the way they prepared. Now, obviously. You can't do anything else other than put your best foot forward, sure. watch all the tape, you know, make make the corrections as needed. You you do your you do your your due diligence to do a good job, uh, and I feel like their confidence comes from their preparation. I think they look at what they've what they've done the past three weeks in between games. It was three weeks, and I think they feel like uh, that they are just as prepared as possible. So. That's probably, Christine, where that confidence comes from. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed that interview. We kind of got to talk to the whole Day family this week. You know, uh, Matt got to talk with uh, first, uh, first Lady of Ohio State Football, Nina Day. Really cool and interesting background that they have there growing up in New England together. Imagine knowing your spouse from the time you were in grade school. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's amazing. Their story is certainly a unique one. That, you're right. Yeah, that photo of them playing Little League Baseball together is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I mean, it, the fact that they ended up married <laughs> with a family, like, that's just incredible. Uh, but, yeah, if you haven't seen Matt's story, it is on NBC4i.com, and you can watch it. It's, uh, it, yeah, I think it's just a really neat family to have at top uh, this football program. And Ryan this week at several points um, – when he had an opportunity to express his gratitude to Gene Smith yeah. for hiring him, he took that opportunity. He's done it several times this year too. Yeah, several times. Because it was a gamble. Yeah. You know, he was not an experienced head coach. He hadn't run a program before. Uh, but what he had done uh, was manage people mm -hmm. and develop people. And you know, he has the the attitude. He's 40 years old. He's he is in that neighborhood where he's age appropriate with some of the kids he's recruiting. Yeah. And can relate very well. And again, that's not a, some guys can do it when they're 75 and recruit great. Some guys, yeah. you know, when they're 30 recruit great. But I think for, for Ryan, he has found a real niche in addition to being a scientist, if you will, from an X and O standpoint. I think he can deploy an offense about as well as anybody we've seen. Even his ability to get. All right, again, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. Here we are live on uh, Fox 8, Northeastern Ohio. Hello, hello to Dayton in the Miami Valley. And of course, hello to Central Ohio. You're taking a live look at the Buckeyes as they are on the field there in Sun Devil Stadium ahead of the Fiesta Bowl. We are about an hour and 20 minutes away from kickoff right now. Really exciting. Jared Smalley, our NBC4 sports director, is there, as along with uh, uh, digital sports reporter Justin Holbrock. They are in there. And hey, Jared, can you? 
you can you still hear me? I want to ask about uh, what it's looking like inside the the stadium as far as ratio to Ohio State fans to Clemson fans. I know Ohio State has a, a huge um, alumni base out there, but um, is is it kind of like a blow away thing like we saw in Indy, or do, are there a good amount of Clemson fans there too? Uh, Christine, that is a great question. Hi to everybody watching us across the state. Appreciate you joining us here online. Uh, I would say the crowd estimate at this point, I don't know, even, even-ish. Um, but again, that's kind of what we expected. We, it, it is not going to be what it looked like in Indianapolis. In the Big Ten championship game, Christine, I thought it was 80 to 20. <laughs> Maybe oh, worse. Yes. Easily. Uh, <laughs> Wisconsin fans did not carry great confidence that night. Ended up being a good first uh, first half for them, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair point. They had something to cheer about there for a little bit. They really did. All right, Jared, um, just want to check back in again. The score of the uh, other semifinal game happening in Atlanta right now, it is still 49-14 to 14 LSU, really uh, going away with it right now, about 11 and a half left in the third quarter as they uh, start the second half there in, uh, in Atlanta. Um, hey, Jared, I think we're going to uh, wrap up unless you and Justin have anything else to say, and we'll let the people watch the Buckeyes warm up a little bit more. Yeah, we'll tell you one last couple of things here, uh, something that I think you might want to keep an eye on when it comes to Clemson. Clemson, uh, we mentioned earlier, they're, they've won 50 in a row when they score first. Um, they also defensively, their last 16 opponents, they've held below 20 points. I mean, they have been phenomenal defensively. It, it is a complete football team. They are, uh, ex in addition to being very talented, extremely well coached. Here's the next group of Buckeyes coming out to warm up. Looks like the defensive backs are out here. That's Jeffrey Akuda in the front, along with uh, Damon Arnett, Sean Wade and company out to uh, get loose. And this group, I think, by the way, the defensive backs tonight, this group is going to be tested unlike they've been tested all year. Clemson has two giant receivers in uh, T. Higgins and Justin Ross, both guys 6'4 or taller, both NFL bound who are uh, really going to be a, a matchup difficulty no matter who they play, uh, certainly in, in the case of Ohio State tonight. They do have, uh, Christine, I will say this, Ohio State does some, some taller corners. You know, mm -hmm. Jeff Akuda is taller than six feet. Sean Wade is about 6'2". So they have some guys who, from a height standpoint, are not terribly outmatched uh, yeah. in that regard. But that is going to be a challenge for them. This is a group that is uh, very difficult to defend. So something to keep an eye on tonight. Yeah, certainly we will, Jared. Um, thank you guys so much. Again, you're taking a live look inside of Sun Devil Stadium where the Buckeyes are coming out to warm up. Jared Smalley inside along with uh, Justin Holbrock. Uh, that is inside Sun Devil Stadium right now, right in front of the uh, Ohio State University end zone there where the team is warming up. Uh, make sure you stay with us. We're going to keep this live stream going so you guys can watch the team warm up a little bit more. And then make sure you come back to us at halftime. Kickoff is at 8 o'clock. Make sure you come back to us here on NBC4i.com as well as on Facebook and our YouTube channels as well. And uh, we'll be chatting. Coach Bill Conley will be joining me here in our streaming center. And we're going to talk a little bit of football. Hopefully it'll go in the Buckeyes' favor. That's, uh, that's me, the Buckeye alum, and fan talking. So, again, thank you all so much for watching from across the state, our Fox 8 viewers as well as WDTN in Dayton and, of course, NBC4 here in Central Ohio. We'll let you watch the team warm up. Thank you guys so much for watching and come back at halftime for some analysis with uh, me and uh, mostly head co uh, <laughs> coach Bill uh, Conley. Bye guys.
Jared's Mike, one, two, three.